Mitral regurgitation is a condition where the mitral valve which is placed between the left atrium and the left ventricle fails to close effectively. As you can see there, the normal heart when the left ventricle is contracting, the mitral valve should completely close to enable the blood to go into the iota and it also prevents the blood from coming into the left atrium. In the diagram shown in the left half, you can see that the mitral valve is not closing properly as a result of mitral valve prolapse. And therefore, the blood goes back into the left atrium when the ventricle contracts. Now, in India, the common reason for mitral regurgitation, which is clinically significant, is recurrent rheumatic fever. As for the signs of uh, chronic mitral regurgitation, since repeatedly large volume of blood goes back into the left atrium, which subsequently comes back into the left ventricle, the pulse will be of high volume in severe mitral regurgitation. For the same reason, blood pressure will show a white pulse pressure, which is the difference between the systolic pressure and the diastolic pressure in patients with severe mitral regurgitation. And when mitral regurgitation leads on to the development of pulmonary hypertension and right ventricular hypertrophy, the JVP becomes elevated. Since the left ventricle dilates, apical impulse is seen in more than one intercostal space which is termed as hyperdynamic and it can be shifted laterally and also it can be shifted down. As a result of right ventricular hypertrophy and pulmonary hypertension, you may see pulsations in the left parasternal region and pulmonary region. Parasternal heave is not that common in a mitral regurgitation except when there is a severe mitral regurgitation which persists for a long period of time. Parasternal heave is typically more common in severe mitral stenosis. The type of Apex beat when you palpate will be hyperdynamic, that is it will produce an ill-sustained heave when you palpate. Palpable P2 may be present due to pulmonary hypertension. A systolic thrill may be felt in the mitral area and a systolic thrill may also be felt in the pulmonary area due to pulmonary hypertension. Now the typical murmur of mitral regurgitation is the pan-systolic murmur which is heard in the mitral area. As you can see, the pan-systolic murmur starts along with the first sound and ends at the second sound. The intensity remains the same and does not fluctuate through the systole. The murmur can be conducted to the axilla or sometimes to the base of the heart. The first sound is muffled because the, the, the leaflets do not co opt with each other effectively and this muffling happens in severe MR. Other murmurs which you may hear in mitral regurgitation includes an um, ejection systolic murmur in the pulmonary area due to pulmonary hypertension and a pan systolic murmur in the tricuspid area due to functional tricuspid regurgitation. The severity of the murmur is reflected by a hyperdynamic apex which is often shifted down and out. You will also see parasternal pulsation as a consequence of right ventricular hypertrophy and pulmonary hypertension. The P2 can be loud. The S1 will be muffled. Left ventricular S3 will be heard, which indicates a possibility of an impending failure. And uh, the, the grade of the pan-systolic murmur, that is um, the murmur which is associated with the thrill or even higher degree of audibility, is associated with severity of mitral regurgitation.